Hi everyone, this is Dr. Caldwell over here in the corner, um, just because I know there's going to be no text there during our presentation. Um, but this morning I wanted to, or whenever you view this video, I guess actually, I wanted to share with you a little bit about the competing behaviors model for our class that we talked about on our discussions. So we're going to look at what this model is and how it can help you with writing a behavior intervention plan. So let's get started. So kind of more or less, the competing behaviors model is a link between our functional behavior assessment data uh, and writing a behavior intervention plan for an individual student. So we're going to be looking at various components surrounding the behavior and kind of use that as a visual support to work out a behavior plan for the student as part of our process. So the first thing we look at, if you'll see that it popped up right here in the middle, is the student's behavior. So that's the first thing we kind of look at in this whole um, matrix here. So I've just made a hypothetical example and there are challenging behavior, let's say for student A, is that the student uh, repeatedly hits their forehead on a table. So we're really concerned about this behavior and we want to make a behavior plan to help support the student with this. So the next thing we want to look at is the antecedents to that behavior. So in this case, perhaps the antecedent, which is what happens right before the behavior occurs, and this is all based on our observation data and things of this nature. So we know this happens on a regular basis. So an antecedent might be that a non-preferred task, such as a puzzle, is placed on the table in front of the student. So that's happening right before our challenging behaviors. That's why we have this arrow that links them here. Okay, so after that, what we um, are hypothesizing from our FBA data is that the function or purpose of this behavior for the student is escape or avoidance of this task. Because clearly we cannot do this non-preferred task, the puzzle, we can't do that with the student when they're banging their head on the table. It's pretty much impossible. So um, that does perhaps serve the function uh, for that student of communicating or disrupting this process and per say perhaps communicating, I don't want to do this task, and we know that they really don't want to because they're engaging in this behavior. So they are either escaping or avoiding a task is the result of this behavior for that student. So another thing we want to look at um, is our setting events. And sometimes we may or may not know these because these are kind of things that are going on in the student's life overall. Um, they may happen before they come to school. They may just be happening kind of throughout their life. Um, some possible examples of things like they missed breakfast that day. They didn't sleep well the night before. These are kind of things that just kind of set the stage, if you will, for problem behaviors to become more likely. I think an example I always hear is like maybe um, for us as educators, if we're on the way to work and we're having a really rough commute, there's a lot of traffic, we spill coffee all over ourselves in the car, we're probably coming to work not happy. And that may make us a little more likely to be grumpy or in a bad mood. So those are kind of some things that we can think of with setting events. And like I said, we may or may not know these because we don't necessarily know what's going on with the student at home unless the family has communicated that to us. But if we know them, we can kind of take them into consideration and know that the student may have be having maybe a rough day on some days. And we know that like some behaviors might be more likely because they're having a hard time. All right, so our next step in our model is, so what we're doing now is we're looking at our antecedents. So we have three options when the student is presented with this antecedent, a puzzle. Um, they can engage in the challenging behavior, which is what's probably been happening. And then, but if you look up here at this other option, the desired behavior, uh, completing the puzzle. The desired behavior is what we would really like the student to be doing ideally. Um, it's probably not what's happening right now, and it may be not what's going to happen for a while. Um, but this is kind of our overall goal. We would like the student to be doing this. And I have a little star by that because I wanted to make a quick note. Um, I always like to, if I have a student that really doesn't like a particular task, I really might want to try to figure out why they don't like it instead of wanting them to do it anyway. Um, if they really, really hate it, I might try to figure out, oh, is there another activity we could do to achieve our same educational objective? Or is there a way I can make this more fun for the student by doing some activities that are about things that interest them? So those are some, that's kind of a separate uh, topic, but I just like to make that note that we don't want to just force them to do the puzzle if they really, really hate it. And see if we can find something else. But for the purposes of this model, what we would like the student to be doing is, let's say, completing the puzzle. So 
we have maintaining consequences for them. And um, in this case, sorry, I'm going to go back because my little screen share thing popped up. All right. So for the maintaining consequences, these are some reward systems we might typically have set up in a classroom. We might be using praise with students. Oh, great job doing your puzzle. That's awesome. Um, we might be giving them tokens or points on their behavior chart or some other reward. So these are kind of the typical steps. This is our kind of ideal model here. We have the student, we give them a lovely task, they complete the task and they get a reward. That's kind of what we would like to be happening. Um, but clearly because we're making this model, it's not what's happening. But it's good to know that that's kind of our overall goal up there. All right. So our last step in the model is the replacement behavior. And this is really where our behavior intervention plan comes in. So we're going to think of another way for the student to achieve their same function. We're not up here yet at this um, getting a reward stage. The student is still here. So the student is trying to escape or avoid this task. And they're doing so by engaging in some behavior that's really dangerous for them. We want to be able to keep them safe. So with our behavior intervention plan, we're going to give them a replacement behavior. In many cases, it will depend on your plan. Um, and what your district behavior specialist says. But for the replacement behavior, we're going to give them another way to communicate that, hey, I don't want to do this. Um, another way to escape or avoid the task, essentially. Um, we're going to let them give the teacher a break card is one example that I've used with a student in a similar situation. Um, I'm not going to get into the specifics of how we will teach that replacement behavior. I can put some links for that for your reference. But essentially what we want to do with a replacement behavior is give the student another way to communicate to you that I don't want to do this because right now they're communicating the fact that they don't want to do it by banging their head on the table and that's dangerous. So we want to give them another way to tell you that they don't want to do this task. So requesting a break with whatever communication means that they have is a great way to do that. So that last step is to give a replacement behavior, which is a behavior that's going to be more appropriate for the student um, and also achieve this same function. So that's the overall competing behaviors model. So I wanted to share a little bit about it with you because I know it's kind of uh, tricky to understand all these components. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.